Do you have items in your craft stash that are neglected and unused, but you can't bear to get rid of them? Welcome to Use It or Lose It, a weekly YouTube series where I'll dive into the products that you have lying around in your craft room and the products I have lying around in mine. After I've created something, I'll decide if I think I'll use it again or if it needs to give up that precious space in my stash, and I hope you'll play along. Hey there, it's Jen Scout, and welcome to the first video in my new series, Use It or Lose It. Today we're going to talk about wood veneer, and what I want to do with this, with this series is talk about, each week, talk about something that's sitting around in your stash, or my stash, uh, and how we can try to use it up or um, just kind of play with it so we can decide if we want to keep it around or if we just know we we're, we're not going to use it and um, get rid of it. So you can see here that I have a lot of wood veneer, okay? This whole thing is full. It's not very a thick box, but um, this whole thing is full of larger pieces and then I have a bunch of smaller pieces in these little containers that you can open up like this. And so those are, um, those are pretty full too. And then I have this one, which is just specifically Ellie Studio wood veneer, but nonetheless, all of this is wood veneer. So there's lots of things you can do with wood veneer and I'll give you some additional suggestions at the end of the video. But what I want to do for this particular video, which uses a lot of these and also looks pretty awesome is, well, at least I think it will. I cut out this cut file. This is a Paige Evans cut file. You can find it in the Silhouette store. It's called Pie Chart Heart. And it actually cuts out the heart, but I deleted the line so it just stayed on the paper and didn't cut out the heart on the outside so it was just an, in this big sheet of paper. So what I'm going to do is, this, this is the photo I'm using, and it's my daughter eating a rainbow sucker. And I want to do a layout about how I'm... I'm a sucker for rainbows, and yes, that's an intentional pun. <laughs> um, and so what I want to do is put the rainbow colors behind the heart here. So I'm going to paint my wood veneer in different colors to make that rainbow appear. And I'm just going to choose a bunch of different ones. Um, I'm not going to probably choose things like leaves or pumpkins for this kind of layout, but you could really use anything. And then just fill it up with all of the colors. Now, I don't have paint. I'm going to use acrylic paint because that will cover the wood pretty well. Um, and I don't have paint colors in the whole rainbow. So what I'm going to do is I have some white paint, and I'm just going to add like spray mist to it or... Um, I have some re-inkers. I'm just going to add that to the white and make colors with that. So I understand that some of these colors will not be, like this is kind of a reddish, it's a reddish pink color. It's going to get a little bit lighter when I put it in the white paint, but I'm just going to go with it and it's going to be fine. So that is the plan. I will put you on fast forward and we'll get this started. So I'm going to start by placing my cut file onto my background paper and I'm just tracing the heart so that I know where I need to place things. I, I need a boundary of some sort for my wood veneer. Then I'm just pulling all of the wood veneer out of um, these little boxes that I have and I'm mostly pulling basic shapes like hearts, stars, uh, arrows, butterflies, things like that. Um, but I do pull a few words as well as some other little shapes that you'll see here. And I'm just grabbing a bunch, probably more than I need, but I just um, want a variety here. And I'm just layering it all in a pile in, on my paper. And then you'll see in a second, I'll go through the larger box. So that that box that I have has mostly bigger pieces. And I'm just going through to see what I want. Um, like I mentioned before, those leaves are really fallish, so I don't use those, but I do use some other kinds of leaves and some larger items like the butterfly. I just like the contrast of size. So after I do that, what I'm gonna do is just start placing them on the layout. I'm gonna fit them together like a puzzle, and I'm not worried about like placing things in colors or where the sections are gonna be divided at all right now. I am just placing the pieces down. So here you can see I've skipped ahead a little bit. I started with the larger pieces and then I fill in with the uh, like medium sized pieces and then you can go back in and fill it with the teeny tiny pieces. And I've included some things that uh, go along with the photo like M is, my daughter's name is Malia so I included some M's in there and there's a three because we have three people in our family and there's 
um, a word that says moo and that's my daughter's nickname so just little things like that that I thought were fun so just fi filling in the last few spaces here and I have lots of tiny little pieces so it works well and then I'm placing my cut file back on top to see how it's going to look and it looks like it's going to be awesome so they're just laying there they're not stuck down I took a photo with my phone in case I needed it and now I'm going to start uh, painting the pieces so right now I'm trying to mix up a red color and it turns out really really pink um, and so I do use the pink anyway uh, but I will pull out some red paint when I get to the red color because I if I mix it with too much white it's going to be pink no matter what so I w went and found uh, some red paint and I'm just using acrylic paint for this now the way that I did this to figure out what color I should paint each wood veneer piece is I laid the cut file on top and then I put a little dot of paint on each piece of wood that fell within the boundaries of of that section and some of them overlap into the other sections and that's fine I just made sure that I um, you know had a variety of pieces going into other sections so here you can see I've moved ahead a little bit I've got my purples my pinks my reds and I'm starting on orange and yellow here and this is bit this is really fun so you can see when I put the cut file on top of it there's some little pieces that go across the edge and I just it this is a labor of love there's a lot of pieces here and you can probably tell that it's a labor of love because I had to piece everything together but for me this was really really fun I love fitting things together like this and fiddling uh, if you've watched my videos you know how I like to use the word nestle I love to nestle things together so this was really fun but if you didn't want to uh, take this much time you could use just larger pieces and you could leave them just as wood veneer like the color wood uh, don't paint them at all and that would be okay too you could also emboss these instead of paint them you could spray them with with mist instead of paint them you're just gonna get a, a bunch of different looks based on what medium you use to color the wood veneer you could also just like press it into an ink pad and that would work well too so I'm just finishing up my last couple sections I'm doing kind of like a yellow green and then I'll do green and I'll do aqua and blue so here it is finished you can see on the bottom left I got yellow paint everywhere uh, so I decided to go ahead and make that part of my design and what I'm doing now is I'm just getting some paint and I am coordinating the color with the um, color of wood veneer section that it's next to and I'm just painting with like scribbly lines uh, on the outer edges and as well as like one of the lines that goes to the center so I am just uh, re-wetting some of these paints I let these kind of dry a little bit and if I would have known I was going to do this in the first place I would have painted that while I like right after I painted the wood veneer pieces because some of the colors I had to remix and they weren't exactly the same but it doesn't really matter uh, you can see I'm staring fairly close to the edge of the heart you could you could do this more than I did or you could do it not at all um, I think what would look really nice is the smushing technique so you just take some paint and put it on a piece of packaging and then um, wet it and then place it down onto your paper and smush it around and I like the um, kind of uh, loose feel of that this is a little bit more contrived with the with the paintbrush because I have more control over it but I'm just trying to be really scribbly and messy and I think it turns out pretty cool it kind of almost looks like um, like flames coming from it or you know those pictures of the Sun where you can just see like the little Sun flares coming up that's kind of what it reminds me of uh, even though they're all different colors so I will just finish doing that I'm not worrying about the center of the circle because I'm pretty sure it's gonna get covered up by my photo and one of the things that uh, I did that might make you cringe a little bit is a lot of these pieces are going to get covered up by my photo. And if you don't, if you don't want that to happen, if you want to save your wood veneer pieces, then I would suggest figuring out where you're going to put the photo and then don't put wood veneer behind your photo. Uh, but I have a million. That's what this series is all about is using stuff up. And so it didn't bother me at all. Now what I'm going to do is decide how I want to do my title. So there's my photo and I'm just kind of placing it and I want a little bit of each color to show at least and I am going to play around with the title. Originally I thought I wanted to put the title around the entire heart uh, and I love these letter stickers from Pink Fresh Studio 
but they're kind of large and I would need to fill the space around the entire heart um, and use the same alphabet and I don't think I have enough for my title which I want to be uh, I'm a sucker for rainbows and so I'm just thinking here and I've grabbed some other letter stickers I know I, I'm gonna use some smaller letter stickers for the words I'm a sucker for um, and I pulled out these Ellie studio black letter stickers they're a great size they're great for subtitles uh, I usually like to do with my titles one word is larger than the rest and so I could have either gone with sucker or rainbows for this one because the photo has a sucker in it but the entire layout is a rainbow so I went for rainbow as a large word and uh, now I'm playing around with the idea of just doing the top part of the of the heart as the like where the title sits but it just looks off balance because of the huge letters on the right so I will end up changing my mind and I don't remember if I mentioned it but that's just sitting on wax paper so I can you know be indecisive and figure out where I want things to go before I commit to it and I really am glad that I did that because I end up changing it so what I decide to do is overlap it onto the photo there's a lot of space in there that's not taken up by the subject which is my daughter and then the sucker so uh, there's a lot of space above that and so I decide to go with that and then I, th I thought about using white letters for the rest of the title. The black felt too heavy, um, but the white didn't stand out enough. So what I decided to do was kind of mimic the Pink Fresh Studio alphabet stickers and just take my black pen and draw, um, draw a line down the middle of the, the letters uh, of these Ellie Studio stickers. And I love the way it looks. It just kind of looks like the same, uh, the same stickers, but in different sizes. And so I thought that was fun. So I definitely suggest doing that if you like that look. And now I'm just going to play around with the placement. And right now I'm thinking about how it's going to be awkward to put these letter stickers down because they go over the photo to the left and they're going to have to be glued down to the wood veneer pieces. And it, there's kind of like empty spaces behind it. So I'm thinking about that. And then I decide to mount my photo with some vellum. I thought vellum or... Um, that wrapping, not wrapping paper, what is it, tissue paper, would go behind it nicely because they're a little bit transparent, but I decided to go with the vellum because you can see more of the colors when I use the vellum. And I'm gonna do two layers, and I'm just using my ruler to tear the edge of it because I like the texture of the tear, but I wanted it to be fairly straight, so that's a good way to um, tear paper or vellum, but especially vellum, I don't know, I just really like the way it looks on vellum. So I'm making this one a little bit smaller and it's kind of tedious because there's not very much uh, paper at the bottom so I kind of have to rip it off in pieces but it ends up working fine. So I thought I was going to place the two pieces just right um, behind each other vertically but I decided that I could place one of them horizontally and then my title could rest on it. So then I solve my problem of the title but I still get that color peeking through. So that made me pretty happy and I'm just going to glue those pieces down. And then I am going to get my title stuck down as well. Before, actually, before I do any of that, you can see that I put a uh, foam on the back of this entire um, cut apart sheet, not cut apart sheet, this die cut sheet that I have because the wood veneer stands up a little bit, it has dimension, and so I need the rest of the layout or the rest of the page to stand up to the height of the wood veneer. So that worked out nicely and I'm just using, I used craft foam um, that's adhesive on one side. So now I'll get the title down and I'm just making sure that the word sucker uh, fits on the at the very top of the volume. And right at this moment, I'm thinking I could probably put my journaling on the vellum below the title. And so because I was with a layout like this, you kind of have to figure out where you want things to go because you don't want to cover up that masterpiece you made in the background, right? So at this point, I remembered that I had some really cute, pretty little studio uh, supplies that I bought like six months ago and haven't used. And they have these rainbow colors and it's so perfect. It's They're designed by Zinnia. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but it starts with an A. <laughs> and they're so pretty. So I'm using some word stickers and I'm just placing them in each section. So I'm embellishing. I know that there's already a lot of wood veneer and it doesn't really need any more embellishment, but I thought it was fun. And I'm adding some words in the same colors uh, on the hearts. And I feel like if you want to use a lot of embellishment to do it, embellish your things by color because 
your eye takes in the color as a whole and not all of the bits and pieces. And so it, it makes it a little bit more restful, even though you have a ton going on, if that makes any sense. So I'm just trying to find uh, words and pieces that will go with each color. And I'll end up pulling out a million sticker sheets to get what I want <laughs> because sometimes I get nitpicky like that. And um, what else? Oh, I forgot I was going to tell you those little p banner pieces below the title are from a cut apart sheet from that same uh, line from Pink, uh, Pretty Little Studio. Okay, so I decided that there's gold at the end of a rainbow, so I put that puffy gold heart, that's from Maggie Holmes, below my title, and so that takes up the space that I thought I might use for journaling. So at this point, my plan is to journal around the edge of the heart. And now I'm just finding a few more things that I can add into the spaces uh, that match the colors, and I'm overlapping some of them onto the photo because my title overlaps the photo, so I wanted a, something else to overlap as well. And I'm just flipping through different sticker books. I have my Chamel Glitter Girl uh, sticker book or sticker folder rather there. And there's a lot of colors that that match with this. And I'm just going to pull out a variety of stickers that I have to see what works. And then I, these again are from Pretty Little Studio and uh, they match a lot of the colors really well. They're just little heart stickers and they're adorable. And I think that this line is called Tales and Dr Dreams, or I can't remember, but I'll make sure to link to all of the available products in the video description below. So be sure to check that out if you see anything you like. Um, so yeah, just going, keeping on going through my stickers here, and I thought maybe I could add a label into the orange space for my, like for my date, but it looks really like it doesn't belong there. I'm forcing it, and I don't like it. So I take it off, and just keep searching because that's how I need to do it. So now I'm looking for two small gold foil hearts because I have that large heart at the bottom. I wanna do uh, two at the top. I like to make a triangle there. And so the triangle will go around the title. So when your eye takes in those pieces, it, it will jump from one to the next to the next and, and you'll uh, get the title in there right away. So that's just kind of like a thing that you don't realize you're doing when you're looking at things, but you do. And now I'm just kind of being nitpicky again and trying to find the last few things. Finally, I remembered I had these butterfly stickers from a Pretty Little Studio as well, and I found three of them, a blue, a red, and an orange that matched the layout, and I put those on, and I really liked the way that ended up looking. And I'm just adding a few more stickers here and there, and that pretty much is going to complete the layout. I will add my journaling on the top curve of the heart, the top right, and then you'll see me here in just a second, I'm going to stamp the date on the bottom left. And so that kind of balances a little bit, even though there's a lot more journaling than there is stamping, uh, I think it works well. So that's gonna finish this off. Here are some close-up photos that you can see. And then after these photos, I have a few more examples to show you. So I hope that you'll give something like this a try um, and paint your wood veneer. And if you don't wanna paint your wood veneer, I've got some other ideas here for you. So the next layout that I'm going to show you is the same concept, but I didn't paint any of the wood veneer. And it looks really awesome. It's a little bit more of a subtle take on that. The next one shows wood veneer in a line. Now these happen to fit together, but you could do wood veneer in a line even if they don't match up like that. You can use wood veneer as just accents. Make sure you put them in a visual triangle like this. And then here I wanted to point out that the wood veneer, half of it is painted. So you can just put a piece of washi tape down on the wood veneer and then paint the other half and it gives it a really interesting look. I hope that you've enjoyed and I hope that you'll play along. Try pulling out your wood veneer and see what you can make and be sure to share it with me uh, in the comments below. And if you wanna use the hashtag um, crafty use it or lose it on Instagram. That would be awesome. We'll see you again next week.